Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on fluid flow fundamentals. So, as we know that uh, we will be dealing with the flow inside the tundis and uh, this flow is of the molten steel. So, we need to have the proper understanding of the uh, flow behavior inside the tundis. Uh, molten steel will be flowing uh, and then uh, uh, accordingly, I mean when it is uh, flowing inside the tundis, so there will be many uh, phenomena which will be occurring inside. Uh, there will be uh, you know uh, flow uh, around the corner in the tundis, then during that process there may be uh, flotation of inclusions, uh, then uh, you will be associated phenomena like uh, there will be heat transfer from the walls and from the top. So, we need to have uh, the proper understanding of the fluid flow as well as the heat transfer phenomena. Uh, we should have some uh, basic understanding uh, about the fluid flow phenomena and how to model it. So, what are the uh, different terms which uh, we need to know, uh, what are the fundamental principles, what were the governing equations, all is uh, needed uh, to study. Uh, the um, behavior of different processes inside the tundis. So, in that line uh, initially we need to have the understanding about the uh, fluid flow fundamentals and in this lecture we will have uh, some light over the uh, initial you know uh, fundamental understanding about the fluid flow phenomena. So, uh, you know a laws of uh, fluid mechanics govern the flow of metal in train of gas entrainment of gas and slag the movement and flotation of non metallic inclusions etc so as we discussed that uh, uh, here in all these cases um, the laws of uh, fluid mechanics uh, which will be governing the flow of metal they will be important and that is why uh, we need to understand the fluid flow behavior, uh, especially uh, if you talk about the uh, tundis. So, in the tundis, uh, you have uh, uh, different uh, regions. Uh, uh, there is a region where the uh, liquid metal is uh, uh, coming from the ladle, and then you have the remote regions also. So, in most of the cases generally the tundis flow is considered to be turbulent. So, we need to also have the understanding about uh, the laminar as well as the turbulent regions, what are the laminar regions, how there is a, a turbulence uh, region you know um, defined. Uh, we need to have understanding about the uh, you know characteristics of the laminar flow as well as the uh, turbulent flow because uh, and there will be a mixing uh, which will be going inside the tundis. Uh, there may be uh, you know uh, different uh, kind of processes heat transfer there may be uh, one phase two phase or so. So, uh, so actually uh, we know we need to know about the fluid flow turbulence heat transfer and all that. So, uh, during this uh, week we will be talking about the fundamentals about the uh, fluid flow. So, uh, coming to the um, uh, fluid flow regimes, so as we know that when we uh, talk about the fluid flow, then uh, uh, the flow regimes are basically classified as either the laminar uh, or the turbulent flow regime. So, uh, as we see that uh, uh, when we uh, talk about the laminar flow in that uh, the layers of fluid will be sliding over one another. Uh, without any macroscopic uh, mixing uh, or even the intermingling of fluid. 
uh, in the direction perpendicular to the fluid flow. So, that is um, uh, normally uh, the laminar flow. So, in the laminar flow if you uh, talk in a very rough sense, so you have the layers which will be moving over one another. So, there will not be any kind of vortexing, uh, there will not be intermingling of fluid in the uh, direction perpendicular to the uh, fluid flow like uh, when you have uh, suppose you have the uh, conduit. So, and the layers move one over other. So, this is a kind of uh, flow that is your uh, laminar flow. Whereas, uh, uh, you know and in this case uh, uh, you know uh, there will not be intermingling as, as, as the definition tells that there will not be intermingling of the layer which is uh, one over other. So, they will not uh, you know uh, intermingle with uh, one another. Whereas, uh, in the case of uh, turbulent flow that is uh, not the case. Uh, in the case of uh, turbulent flow macroscopic uh, mixing will be taking place uh, between fluid layers or portions of fluid over relatively uh, you know long distances. So, uh, in this case you will have the macroscopic mixing uh, um, you know taking place and uh, uh, that will be also taking place between the fluid layers or portions of fluid over uh, large distances. So, you will be talking about those uh, distances or length scales or so. So, um, uh, in, in that we need to understand about uh, you know different type of models which should uh, you know be uh, uh, talking about these turbulence uh, behavior and then its associated effect on the on predicting the you know output parameters. So, we will have uh, the discussion about the turbulence itself uh, uh, in the coming week. So, um, uh, there we will be talking about these uh, you know uh, over relatively long distances. So, how these uh, layers are um, interacting uh, you know how there is intermingling and how these um, distances are taken into account. So, these things are uh, discussed. Uh, as you know that the uh, demarcation between uh, the uh, turbulent flow and the laminar flow it was uh, uh, done by uh, it is done by a very renowned number uh, that is Reynolds number and it is uh, uh, by uh, the very renowned uh, researcher scientist Osborne Reynolds. So, he you know uh, uh, devised or, or he has given this number that is known as the uh, Reynolds number. So, this is the criteria for uh, uh, you know for differentiating the laminar flow from the uh, turbulent flow and Reynolds number will be uh, defined as L v rho upon eta. So, uh, you know many a times we write rho v d upon uh, you know uh, mu or eta whatever. So, in this uh, basically uh, we uh, take this uh, you know L as the characteristic length of the system. So, uh, it is normally like uh, the diameter of pipe when we are talking about the uh, pipe flow. Uh, similarly, you have uh, v. So, v is the average velocity of the fluid. Then uh, you have uh, uh, rho and eta is there. So, rho is the uh, density of the fluid and eta is uh, the uh, viscosity of the fluid. So, uh, you know depending upon so once you have uh, uh, any uh, you know geometry or container in which the there is flow going on. So, using this uh, correlationship uh, you will find the uh, Reynolds number and uh, if this Reynolds number is uh, more than certain critical value for a particular configuration of uh, vessel in that case uh, it is said to be. Uh, uh, you know uh, turbulent or and if it is less than that. So, it will be laminar. So, there will be transition from laminar to turbulent uh, you know and that will be uh, defined by uh, 
uh, that will be at a limit to that number that is known as the Reynolds number. So, so, so uh, for the uh, pipe flow, uh, it is uh, uh, given by 2100. So, uh, so that may be uh, different for the uh, different type of uh, you know uh, cases and uh, similarly uh, you know uh, we can have uh, uh, surface flows. So, and there the this uh, number will be uh, different. So, similar so th that way when we talk about the uh, flow of uh, uh, molten metal even in the uh, turn this also. So, in that case uh, um, uh, we can uh, very much uh, find whether the flow is uh, uh, turbulent or uh, laminar depending upon the uh, value of these uh, Reynolds numbers. So, Reynolds number. Now, uh, next thing which will be uh, you know uh, further uh, uh, required to know uh, to us. Uh, so, you will have the transition from laminar to turbulent is characterized by dimensionless quantity known as the Reynolds number that is what we have seen and this will be uh, this transition will be dependent on the boundary geometry of the uh, system. So, they will be uh, basically uh, partly to the arbitrary nature of the characteristic length L and partly to the inherent differences in the uh, flow pattern. So, they will be uh, you know dependent upon uh, that way. So, depending upon the geometry you will have uh, the uh, maybe the different uh, value of the um, uh, Reynolds number which will be demarcating the, uh, the, the place uh, I mean and the point at which uh, there will be transition from the laminar to the uh, turbulent region. So, um, then uh, uh, we need to know also a very important property of the material that is uh, viscosity and, and that is basically uh, defined by um, the um, law. So, um, uh, this uh, law is the Newton's law of uh, viscosity. So, you will have uh, um, you know uh, as we see that uh, there will be a velocity gradient and uh, that will be creating the um, you know shear stress. So, uh, so what was seen that uh, the uh, you know the uh, shear stress which was uh, plotted against the velocity gradient. So, you know it was seen to pass through the origin and uh, uh, that was uh, uh, you know uh, by uh, an experiment and uh, this experiment was basically uh, that you had a you know stationary plate. So, this was the uh, stationary plate and you have uh, you know fluid in between and, and this is a plate which is uh, you know uh, this is uh, uh, allowed to move. So, this is a uh, moving plate and, and similarly you have this as the stationary plate. So, uh, initially you know upper plate is uh, uh, this is a stationary. So, you will have uh, uh, if you see that this is your x direction and this is your uh, y direction. So, here you have uh, y equal to y and you have v equal to 0 and here you have uh, y equal to 0 and v is v actually you are moving this plate with uh, velocity v. So, uh, you know and if you assume that uh, there is uh, no slip in, in this case. So, uh, what will happen that uh, the uh, layer of fluid which will uh, you know this uh, uh, will start uh, you know that uh, moving with the velocity v. So, that this uh, this is uh, in between there is fluid. So, once you are moving it the fluid which is in connection with in contact with this moving plate it will also start moving with uh, velocity v. So, this is stationary. So, you will it will have um, you know the same uh, it will be stationary itself, but the fluid which is here they will be uh, they will start moving uh, with the velocity v. So, you will have you will be seeing the a kind of velocity gradient uh, as we see as we move. Uh, in this uh, direction. Now, uh, here so the the lower mast this uh, you know this uh, 
lower most uh, this fluid layer it will be uh, gradually transferring this uh, uh, momentum uh, to the upper fluid layers because upper fluid layer although it is in um, uh, you know uh, contact. So, they will this because of the movement it will be transferring this momentum to the upper fluid layers and uh, you know initially there will be some unsteady uh, kind of uh, situation and uh, then uh, you will have after uh, sufficient time you will have a steady state which is uh, uh, reached and, and then you can have this uh, velocity profile and uh, you know at that time the fluid velocity will not change with time. So, this kind of velocity profile you will be uh, uh, getting it. Now, in this experiment what is observed that you will have uh, when you have the attainment of a steady state in that case a force uh, you know uh, uh, must be exerted on the uh, lower plate. So, um, uh, uh, to keep it in uh, motion. So, you will have to have uh, uh, this uh, a force it needs to be exerted and uh, uh, Newton has found that uh, this force uh, you know uh, per unit area of the uh, plate that was found to be uh, proportional to the uh, velocity and inversely proportional to the spacing y. So, what was seen that uh, the uh, force per unit area so, force uh, per unit area of the plate is uh, proportional to velocity v and inversely proportional to the spacing between the plates. So, that is what was found by Newton. So, so what we he found that f by a. So, this is uh, proportional to v by y. Now, uh, you will have to uh, give. Uh, so, a is basically the surface area of the plate, v is the velocity, y is the distance in uh, y direction. So, you know, so, if you put the constant of proportionality f by a will be eta times v by y. So, this eta that is so f by a if you look at force per unit area so that will be talking about the shear stress. So, this is uh, um, the shear stress. So, f by a will be the shear stress at the interface. So, this is known as the uh, shear stress you know uh, that will be uh, at the interface between lower plate and adjacent fluid layer. So, uh, so accordingly uh, you, you what you see that the shear stress uh, that is uh, basically uh, what you see. So, uh, you can express it as the velocity gradient. So, uh, if you uh, talk in terms of the velocity gradient, so change of velocity with respect to the y. So, uh, what we see that if you uh, denote this as the tau uh, y x and this is as d v x upon d v y. So, uh, from by d y basically change in uh, distance uh, that is y. So, you can write uh, uh, if you write in the differential form. So, you can write in the differential form as tau y x it will be uh, minus of eta into uh, d v upon d y. So, as uh, because uh, as you are increasing y the change in velocity is uh, negative that is why uh, when you are writing uh, you know in the case of differential in, in differential form. So, uh, you see that uh, this is uh, tau x y x that is known as minus of eta d v upon so d v you know x upon uh, d y. So, this uh, you know rule is known as uh, the Newton's law of viscosity because it is defining this term eta uh, that is uh, your uh, viscosity. 
Now, in this term uh, you see tau y x. So, this uh, tau y x if you see, so your tau y x becomes uh, minus of eta d v x upon d y. So, your uh, you have uh, y as well as x. So, this will be uh, in, in tau y x, uh, the y will be the direction of momentum transfer. So, in tau y x, uh, y is uh, the direction of momentum transfer and x is the direction of uh, uh, fluid velocity. So, uh, so that way uh, we are writing this uh, tau y x. Then eta is known as the uh, coefficient of molecular viscosity. Or we also call it as simply the um, viscosity of the fluid then uh, you know and d v x upon d y. So, this is uh, known as the velocity gradient. As uh, because the eta has to be always positive. So, this term we are putting the one uh, negative sign and uh, that uh, will be uh, having certain meaning. Uh, because uh, that has to be having the uh, you know positive value always the viscosity value cannot be uh, negative. So, uh, what we uh, see that uh, this uh, uh, viscosity that is the molecular viscosity and it is because of the uh, molecular exchange of uh, uh, the momentum should uh, taking place uh, you know uh, in this uh, kind of uh, flow. Now, this is uh, normally uh, in the case of laminar flow where we assume that there is uh, uh, you know uh, movement of layer one over other in a, uh, in, in, in a laminar uh, manner. Now, uh, the, the liquids which obey this law where the uh, shear stress will be proportional to the velocity gradient. So, they will be known as the Newtonian fluid and uh, and uh, these uh, fluids like water or uh, or so or molten steel or so they they are at that temperature molten steel so they are uh, uh, considered to be the newtonian fluid uh, whereas uh, there are fluids which do not obey this law so in those cases uh, there is no linear uh, you know uh, relationship or there may be different relationship than uh, what is being observed by this uh, kind of um, uh, by these fluids Newtonian fluids. So, they are known as the non-Newtonian fluids. So, the aim is basically to have the uh, prediction of uh, the uh, shear stresses and uh, because uh, you know. Uh, so, so that is why uh, now in, in the case of uh, our analysis mostly we will be dealing with the uh, Newtonian fluid only. So, uh, mostly we will have the uh, dealing with uh, these uh, uh, principles. Uh, now, when we will see that uh, uh, we do are not only concerned with only this molecular viscosity, but uh, uh, as the flow in the tundis is turbulent. So, uh, in, in that case you are not uh, assured only uh, and you are uh, uh, bound to have the intermingling of the fluid layers. So, you will have uh, not only the momentum exchange uh, across the layers only. So, that may be over the large distances. So, you will have uh, uh, you know other uh, viscosity component also because of the turbulence and that is known as turbulent viscosity. And then you will have the effective viscosity as the sum of these two. So, that is what uh, some idea we had got in the earlier uh, lectures also. So, in those cases uh, we will have uh, uh, the prediction of that turbulent viscosity and that we will uh, study when we will talk about the turbulence. So, how uh, that is taken into account. So, uh, so that will be uh, seen in our uh, uh, coming lectures. 
So, uh, if you uh, talk about uh, the uh, viscosity, so viscosity has a uh, unit and uh, that is uh, you have uh, uh, many kind of either you have SI unit or you have the uh, you know uh, in CGS system also you may have the uh, poise or strokes or so. So, uh, if you talk about the uh, unit of uh, viscosity. So, uh, what we uh, do is uh, in SI unit uh, uh, tau has uh, the unit of uh, uh, Newton per meter square uh, and then uh, you will have this is uh, meter and this way you have meter per second. So, accordingly you can have the uh, uh, unit of um, uh, viscosity and that is uh, kg uh, per meter second. So, that is your uh, unit in the uh, for the uh, viscosity and uh, if you uh, go for the uh, CGS system then it is uh, the poise. So, uh, one poise will be 1 gram per centimeter second. So, you, know, you will have uh, either you know unit of uh, uh, kg per meter second or you may have uh, the uh, gram per centimeter second. So, that is uh, uh, you know uh, one poise and this is one Pascal second. So, uh, if you uh, so this is you know Pascal second and this is uh, you will have uh, the uh, poise. So, if you see that one uh, p uh, one poise will be uh, 0 0.1 Pascal second. So, that way uh, this uh, relationship also is uh, uh, coming up uh, you know for uh, uh, the unit of uh, viscosity and uh, unit of viscosity uh, you know it has some standard value at uh, some standard um, you know temperature and pressure. Now, uh, we have another term uh, you know uh, with uh, viscosity. So, in, in, in the case of engineering analysis uh, what we do is uh, we normally define the viscosity also uh, in terms of viscosity to density ratio. So, for a fluid when we uh, uh, take the ratio of the uh, viscosity to its density. So, that is known as the uh, kinematic viscosity and uh, this kinematic viscosity is uh, represented by uh, the term nu and its unit is uh, actually meter square per second. So, in the case of SI units it will be meter square per second and uh, in uh, CGS uh, system it is centimeter square per second. So, that is uh, the stroke. So, uh, that way uh, you have uh, the other units uh, you know for the uh, uh, you know uh, viscosity itself that is known as the uh, kinematic viscosity. So, this is about uh, that uh, property of the uh, fluid. Now, coming to the uh, dimensionality of the uh, flow. So, uh, if you talk about uh, the, the present case. So, the uh, if you see that the velocity will be changing in uh, uh, one coordinate direction as you are moving in the uh, uh, y direction. So, your velocity seems to be changing. So, that is uh, basically you know, one dimensional flow. So, velocity if changes in any one coordinate direction only then it is considered the one dimensional flow. Uh, similarly, if the velocity uh, is function of x and y coordinates both then uh, the flow is said to be two dimensional. So, you know, if you talk about uh, the uh, boundary layer. So, uh, if you see the momentum boundary layer. So, in that what you see that velocity will be uh, changing and uh, if you look at the. So, what you see that in this case earlier case what you have seen that velocity is only changing in the you know, y direction. So, this is uh, as you y changing. So, so that is why it is said to be one dimensional. Now, if you uh, talk about a you know, velocity momentum boundary layer. Now, in that case what happens that uh, in the case of boundary layer you might have uh, experienced that your uh, uh, your velocity profile goes like this in the, in the boundary layer it will be uh, you know changing. So, your uh, if you see the velocity uh, it will be changing in uh, because of the x and the y in both the directions 
as you move the here, so your uh, you know it is uh, changing. So, in those cases uh, what you see that uh, your uh, velocity uh, will be uh, function of the x and y coordinates that will be changing. So, that is why the flow is said to be the two dimensional. Similarly, uh, if it is uh, dependent upon the all the three coordinate directions, then it is said to be the three dimensional flow. And normally, when we talk about the flow inside the tundis, then it is uh, the uh, you know three dimensional flow. So, uh, while analyzing, we will have to have the, this in mind that it is to, uh, one dimensional, two dimensional, or three dimensional you know flow, and, and accordingly, we will have to do the analysis of uh, the uh, flow. Then comes uh, you know the uh, mode of uh, momentum transport. So, basically there are uh, two modes of uh, the uh, transport momentum transport. Uh, one is momentum uh, you know convective transport and another is the diffusive uh, transport. Now, when the momentum uh, transport is in the direction from higher velocity layer to a lower velocity layer. So, as we have seen in the earlier case, in the earlier case your uh, uh, you know uh, the, uh, the momentum transport is from uh, the uh, lower layer to the uh, higher layer. So, you will have the velocity uh, at lower layer you have higher velocity and at upper layer you have lower velocity. So, when uh, you have the uh, momentum transport uh, from the uh, higher velocity layer to lower velocity layer. So, in that case uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the, uh, your momentum transport is because of the diffusive uh, diffusion. So, that is uh, known as the because of the viscous uh, effect. So, you have the viscosity coming into picture. So, it is because of that uh, mechanism. So, that is why we call it as the viscous or uh, diffusive momentum uh, transport. Now, uh, when your uh, momentum transport, uh, so that is your uh, you know uh, the convective I mean uh, viscous or diffusive momentum uh, transport. Now, if your uh, momentum transport is uh, due to the motion of the fluid itself uh, in the flow direction, then uh, it is uh, known as the uh, uh, convective uh, you know uh, uh, momentum transport. So, uh, if you uh, look at the uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, viscous or diffusive momentum transport. So, in that basically the uh, uh, molecules will be crossing the uh, you know layer. So, that uh, will be uh, you know uh, as per you have the, uh, the molecules like uh, you have the top layer molecule is there. So, and below that you have the molecules. So, this way you have layer of uh, uh, molecules and uh, you will have the, uh, the, the momentum uh, transport will be using uh, you know this mechanism. So, so, that is there in the case of uh, uh, you know. Uh, so, this is because of the uh, viscous uh, you know property. So, that is why it is uh, uh, viscous uh, momentum transport. Whereas, if you uh, see that when you had the two uh, plates and one is in uh, motion and when your so your uh, if you see that when your uh, this was the um, you know velocity profile which was seen uh, in the in the in the case which we studied. So, the viscous momentum will be uh, in this direction. So, that will be transferring the uh, momentum or momentum transport will be in this direction. Now, if the um, it is because of the velocity. So, if it is because of that velocity. So, the velocity is in this direction. So, that is known as the convective momentum transport. So, the rate of convective momentum transport uh, that will be you know uh, mass momentum uh, into velocity by time. So, if you look at the uh, rate of moment convective momentum transport it will be uh, rho v x square a. So, your you know that uh, a is the cross sectional area. So, here this is the cross sectional area uh, perpendicular to the flow direction 
uh, through which the uh, density the fluid of density rho is uh, flowing. So, that way we are finding the rate of uh, uh, convective momentum transport. So, uh, so, so accordingly you can uh, you know uh, you can have the understanding about uh, these properties, you can have uh, the study of other fluid properties also like uh, surface tension and other things which will be used uh, in our lectures to come. Thank you very much.